Megan Hurtigan, Miss Christofferson, AP Language and Composition, December 17th, 2012. A few weeks into the summer between my freshman and sophomore years of high school, my sister and I discovered the Avatar series. Though we had been aware of both the massive fan base surrounding the show and the general storyline, we were cautious about viewing it for the first time. I had seen the movie, an awful adaptation of the show, and was not fond of it. The animated program looked juvenile and shallow, filled with sallow characters and cliched storylines. But finally, after exhausting all other possible methods of entertainment on a day too hot to venture outdoors, my sister and I settled in on the couch to explore the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. What had started as somewhat of a light-hearted viewing of a children's show turned into something much more. My sister and I were glued to the television screen for almost a week, watching three seasons of Avatar with hardly a break between episodes. The reason for this obsessive viewing was simple. Avatar is a really good show. To preface my next remarks, I would like to say that I am not a fan of animated television. I do not like the flat characters, exaggerated movements, or easily predictable storylines. I don't like the childish nature of the shows in general. I know this, that this is what they are supposed to be, but that style is not something I like to watch myself. I'm sure younger children find it charming. Avatar The Last Airbender completely surprised me. Even in the first episodes, the characters were well-defined and consistent. Throughout the entire series, they remained true to their original selves. There is not a single instance in three seasons in which a character was forced to do something that was out of line from his morals. As a side note, I rarely find any television shows that maintain consistent characterization throughout, be it an animated program or a live-action program. That is not to say there was no character development. In the second and third seasons, the main characters, Aang, Katara, Sokka, Toph, Zuko, and Suki, all matured in their own way. They grew up and developed their own views and acted upon those views. The brilliant writers, directors, and producers behind the show, who will go unnamed here for purposes of length, seemed to create a world and place characters inside, but then left the characters to act as they may. It was a pleasure to watch over the young characters as they journeyed on their individual paths to a single destination. The roads taken by the youngsters were fraught with difficulties of an often comic nature, and they were depicted with the classic animated tool of over-exaggeration. The facial expressions, vocal acrobatics, and physical humor all seemed to add to the overall effect of the show. Oh, oh no! You've killed us all! This was strange to me. I usually do not like exaggerated humor, even in live-action comedies. Use of hyperbolic expressions and animations often bothered me to the point that I could no longer watch them. Again, I must credit the brilliance of the creators of Avatar for the smoothness with which they implemented this oft-used technique. Instead of being overwhelming or giving the impression of trying too hard to be humorous, the exaggerated motions complemented the characters and their actions in a refreshing and comic way. The third point I must address is the impeccable storyline. In a 20-minute episode, there are only so many twists a writer can fit in, yet there were an abundance of surprises and intertwined plot lines. I could only predict the outcome of episodes a couple of times, which is also unusual for me. Usually I can predict the endings of stories very easily. The writers keep the audience guessing until the very last moment of the final episode. That is the type of story that intrigues both a young viewer and a more mature viewer. This is Avatar's greatest strength. Avatar appeals to a wide range of audiences, from the youngest of viewers who enjoy the top layer of fun and games, to the mature viewer who appreciates the difficulty of choosing between what is right and what is easy. The quest for that answer is fulfilled in the three seasons of Avatar, and has begun again in its sequel, The Legend of Korra.